I needed to get back to Indiana. And I do thank all of you for your prayers and, and cards uh, during these past days. Most of all, thank Debbie for her prayers. But as I drove back to Indiana during the night, a couple, almost two weeks ago now, um, I drove straight through, 810 miles, drove through the night. And as I was driving, I had a lot of time to think, to think about what might happen unless a miracle occurred, what most likely would happen, and that which no one wants to have happen does happen, and our, our mother did pass. But as I was driving through the night, I, I started thinking about what I might share with family when that time came, and as I was driving all alone, I never seen I-44 so empty of traffic as I did that night, which was a good thing. And I never had one moment where I got sleepy during that, those whole hours of driving. But as I was driving, these words came to my mind that I wrote down and shared. And I titled this, Gone, Gone is Mother. Driving east on I-44, the moon was rising high. Looking at that shining orb, I thought it wanted to cry. Would earth's loss soon be? Was heaven about to gain another? Broken hearts we now see, and we cry. Gone is mother. She chose to give us life. She bore two girls and five boys. Surely we caused her some strife. Yet she gave us many joys. She has gone to that land so fair where there is room for another, and looking at her empty chair, we give thanks to God for Mother. When I read the story of Exodus, I think again about the change that comes in life. This was overwhelming change for the Israelites, and again, change for us. Whatever it is, whatever form it comes in, can be overwhelming. The, Egypt, the Israelites had lived in Egypt for 430 years. And you know, when you live in one spot 430 years as a nation, you can get settled into a routine. During those 430 years, the Israelites had experienced honor and dishonor. They'd experienced feast and famine, joy and sorrow. And with the passing of the years, they had settled into their routine. They had basically got into a rut. And that's what a routine is. Uh, it, you know, we, we call it a routine. It's a fancy word for a rut we're in. And now all that the Israelites had known was cast aside. And they traded the familiarity of Egypt for the vast unknown by following a man whom God had sent named Moses. And Moses led the Egyptians, rather led the Israelites, out of bondage that was placed on them by the Egyptians. And the Israelites knew God had sent a deliverer in Moses, but as we read the story, we find out they were not sure of what to make of him or what to make of his message. Change is part of life. We must learn to adjust to change. Think about the changes in technology that you've seen in your lifetime. When I was a teenager, my music was on a 45 RPM vinyl record. A few, a few years later, the 8-track came into existence. And then on the heels of that came a vast improvement in what we would call the cassette tape. And now we all listen to music on CDs 
or some other means of technology that you carry in your pocket and hold in your hand. Although with all of these vast changes, I still have my 45 RPM records. And if you have any record albums, the vinyl type, the 33 and a third speed, hold on to them, because I see in Cracker Barrel, those records now are selling for $25. <laughs> change. Styles change, vocations change, residences change, and the weather, of course, changes. Change. People change. They change physically and intellectually. We grow up, we grow smarter, but at the same time, we all grow older. That's just part of the equation. Life confronts us with change. The Bible confronts us with it. We read it in the Exodus story. Job and Paul talked about physical change that takes place in people. Job said, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait until my change comes. And then Paul wrote those powerful words we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Jesus talked about spiritual change. He said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven, except you are converted. And conversion means change. Jesus also expressed it in those few words that we find in John chapter 3. You must be born again. Jesus was talking about spiritual change. The change that really makes a difference. The change we must experience. The change that we can have. The fact of change is always operative. The fact of change is always operative. If we fight change, life will be hard. But if we adjust to change, life will be easier. With some changes, we have a say. We can make change, for instance, at the, by voting. We can use the ballot box as one way to make change. With other changes, we have no say. Wives like to make change. They like to change things. The furniture, the interior decor, landscaping, or their husbands. You want to experience change. If you're not married, wait till you get married. Husbands have to learn to accept change, to deal with it. And if we do that in a right way, everything's fine. Life is full of change. Few things stay the same. When we go back to Fairmount, Indiana, we no longer see the old high school building that once stood there where we graduated from. It's gone. I go over and drive through the country where my grandfather once preached. And that little country church is gone. Empty space. And while I was back just this last week, couple of weeks... My sister drove me through the little village where Debbie and I met, where, where we grew up, and we drove by the location of the Methodist church where I went to Bible school, where I had my Cub Scout meetings, where Debbie and I got married, where, I was, where we were saved, where I was called to preach. It's gone. An empty lot is there now. And that reminded me that change is powerful. It's real. It's visible. Change is happening all around us. The fact of change is something that we must accept. 
not only is, would I remind you of the fact of change that, and that it's always operative, but I would say to you this morning that the fear of change must also be recognized. Because there is that element of the unknown when change happens, it is natural for us to be fearful, to, to be afraid or to be scared. And when, you know, like in, in, here in, the, in church, and, and of course I've had it happen all through the years of my pastoring, there are times when people who normally do things are gone. And that then someone steps up, as we see here this morning, and, and does the job so adequately, but yet I heard expressed in a small way here that, you know, this was different this morning. And that those on the platform doing what they did in the, the way they did it was something new. Change. Change happened this morning right before our eyes. And it was good. It was good change. But you can be afraid of change. Doing something you've never done before, that still scares me. Debbie asked me if I was ready to preach this morning. I said, well, I'm, I'm ready, but I'm still scared. Because I haven't done this for a little while. You know, it's not like when you're up here every week as the pastor doing this. You do get to where you feel a little more comfortable. But there's always that element of, of fear, which is healthy. Doing something you've never done before, it's not easy. And I remember well the first Sunday I preached in my first pastorate. That first Sunday morning, I mean, I was scared. I probably preached a total of about 10 minutes. In fact, the people, the congregation said they wanted some of their money back. <laughs> but I was scared. But with a little time and a little practice doing it, the fear began to subside. And the fear was all of a sudden being replaced with boldness. And it was a holy boldness because I am not an outgoing person. I can be content reading my books and just spending time with Debbie and, and being quiet and sort of hiding out. Um, I'm not really an outgoing person, but the Holy Spirit makes me outgoing. And probably some of you might pray that the Holy Spirit would uh, just sort of shut me up. <laughs> the fear of change must be recognized. Doing things in a different way. Israel's change would result in good things for them, but some difficult trials were also ahead of them. Change does not occur without pain and stress. And God says to us, fear not. Those are great words, two words, fear not. And we read them in the Old Testament through the prophets. We, when the birth of Jesus was announced to Joseph and Mary, the angel said, first, fear not. And Jesus said it also in his teaching and preaching, fear not. I remember the words that Jesus spoke as recorded in Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Jesus says to us, fear not, little children, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not. The fear of change must be recognized and it can be overcome. The features of change are also clear. Change brings benefits and advantages to our lives because somewhere along the way, someone decided that change could be realized in, in the oven, in, a, in an oven. 
and we were introduced to the microwave oven. Where would we be without the microwave oven? Debbie says, oh, what would you do without the microwave? You couldn't reheat your coffee. When I drink coffee, I'm a sipper, not a gulper. So my coffee cools off usually before I get a cup drank. And so I hit the microwave. But there is an example of where change is resulted in good things for us benefit for us and you could apply that principle to so many areas of of life where change in technology has really benefited uh, benefited us and made life easier the features of change are clear we see them all around us the benefits change offers us the opportunity for new beginnings new experiences new successes and new blessings and if we truly are so fearful of change we will not even think about it happening, then we are going to stay in the darkest corners of the world that we can find. Maybe there no change will take place. But if we are among those who want to be out in the open, out where the action's at, out where the sun's shining, out where things are happening out where God is working and the Spirit is moving, then we must be ready to welcome change. For God, though He is unchanging, yet He works in His creation and in His people through change. But His change is always for the better. Change gives us new races to run. Change gives us new faces to see. Change gives us new places to serve. And I've had to accept those kinds of changes in the ministry because God has taken us at some time from one church to another. And we were introduced to a new race We were introduced to new faces. We were introduced to a new place to serve. And yet, those changes brought blessings to us. And those changes stretched us and stretched our faith. And we found out how great our God is. Beloved, we must expect change to occur in various ways. And at various times, we must be prepared spiritually, mentally, and emotionally to adjust to the the changes in life. And yes, when one generation passes away, it means we are confronted with change that we have no control over. Because now I realized that with the passing of my mother at 89, I now am the oldest in our family. I am now the oldest. And when I think about that, that scares me. And I don't really like being the oldest. Because that says to me, I'm getting on down the road. And that says to me that eternity is coming closer than it's ever been. Now, my siblings can say to me and make fun of me for being the oldest because that is a fact with mother's passing in our branch of the family I am now the oldest I didn't think this day would it would come it seems so far away but all of a sudden it happens and it will happen to you if it hasn't already happened you will be the generation that now is the oldest And so my bridges to the past family legacy are gone. Now, my siblings and and nephews and nieces, they're asking me, what was it like? (laughs) What was it like 
50 years ago. And they want me to connect the dots for them with the past heritage of the family. Change is occurring, beloved. We must expect change to come in various ways and at various times. Let us prepare for it. Our God is a God who does new things. And he does change things. Most of all, he changes people. He changes us from a sinner to a saint. He changed my body in, from a tavern into a temple. He does convert. He does change us. And thank him for his change that he works within each of us as we submit to his mercy and grace and love. The only one who does not change is God himself. The Bible tells us that in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. God is the only one who does not change. And the only thing that does not change is God's word. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. God does not change and his word does not change. I offer you these words from Isaiah chapter 42 verses 5 through 9. Thus says the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God is a God who changes things for the good and for his glory. But he himself does not change, for he is perfect in every dimension. He is perfect. He is the Holy One. He does not change. I invite you and I challenge you this day. Commit yourself to the God who does new things. He can be trusted. He surely can. And remember this, and I may say it again, for I believe this is a very powerful truth to hold on to. Changing times are in the hands of an unchanging God. Think of that. Isn't that a wonderful principle, a powerful principle for life? Through change, we experience sometimes strife and pain, hard times, tribulation. Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. I have overcome this world and all that is in it. Changing times are in the hands of an unchanging God, and that's where I want to be. In the hands of the unchanging God. Beloved, I believe this so much that I say to you, you can put yourself in his hands and all will be well. It will be well with your soul. There's a hymn that I like that talks about God's faithfulness, his unchange, unchanging character. I'd like to invite you to turn to number 44 in the hymn book. 
Jennifer's going to come and lead us in singing these words, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I believe that the words of the song go along with the principle that I just spoke. Changing times are in the hands of an unchanging God because He is faithful. Let us stand together as we sing these verses.